All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday pre-recorded video. Now we're moving around a little bit, so uh, we're going to be doing more pre-recorded videos instead of live streams. But today is one of those days where you don't want to look at your portfolio. And uh, you can do it, which I'm sure you already have, and it's not looking too great. We've lost around 100 billion in market cap. We're now at 2.4. Bitcoin's been bobbling around 64, 65K. Ethereum's 34, 33.99. And it's probably gonna go lower. I'll just be honest with you. And the reason is because of uh, OGs. And it also has to do with Bitcoin miners and just regular sentiment. So we take a look back and take a look at uh, the ETF flows. As of yesterday, June 17th, today is June 18th, we can see that uh, there was uh, quite a bit of outflows from the unusual suspect, which would be Fidelity and ARC, not Grayscale. Fidelity took out 1394, ARC 759. And, or 758, and the total net outflows are 2211. So this is somewhat concerning, but as a remember, when in doubt, zoom out, this is still the most impressive and the best ETF so far in the history of ETFs in a time frame of four months or less. So if we take a look at this, I mean, we're still way above where we used to be. I think the total flows are 255 as opposed to 257 from yesterday. Uh, so yeah, we have uh, one of those days where it's just not that great, but things could change. Unfortunately, not for the people that went long. And the people that went long, we just had 24-hour uh, liquidations of longs, almost 380 million shorts, 162. So you're looking at roughly half a billion dollars got wrecked or liquidations in those individuals and traders that went both ways. And of, of course, uh, you're welcome to do whatever you want to do, but that is what... Uh, trading uh, comes with a certain amount of risk. So you think to yourself, well, if the crypto market, digital asset market is doing so bad, how's the traditional market doing? Fantastic, quite honestly. This is the S&P 500. If you take a look over the last, we'll, go, we'll take a look at five days, pretty much an all-time high. Last month, six months, year to date, one year, five years. S&P 500 is ripping and doing quite well. So what is going on with our market? Because aren't we correlated to the traditional markets in some way, especially with the ARCs and the Black Rocks and everybody else getting to this ETF? Well, it's true, but we have this other thing that we're settled with, and that's miners. Now, we talked about this a couple of days ago, and we tried to do a live stream here, which didn't do too well because the Wi-Fi where we're staying at right now is our house getting renovated. Wasn't the best. And it talked about how miners are under pressure to sell. And it makes a lot of sense. If we take a look at the miner flow to exchange, this is from uh, Ben's website in the Cryptoverse. And if we're taking a look at net flows, this is all the way back from 2012. What this is taking a look at is when Bitcoin miners get paid, meaning they either have the rewards or the fees, depending on what they're actually doing. Of course, uh, the rewards are uh, for mining Bitcoin. The fees are the transactional costs, and that's just not Bitcoin to Bitcoin, that's also Bitcoin ordinals and everything else, which are essentially NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. Regardless, the flow to exchanges usually ramps up after a halving, which we just had on April 20th, 2024. Obviously that's happening, it's gonna keep happening because these miners are doing the same amount of work, the same amount of overhead, and they're getting paid half. Until the other miners shut down, we're going to keep having these outflows. So we can just see if we, change this to monthly and we take a look here that over time you can tell that when the price of bitcoin goes up there is a little bit of uh capitulation or there's a lot of selling going on we can see that uh, happens over here around 2017 we see quite a big number go up then in 2021 we can see that around uh, december 21 things started to really ramp up and then people took some big profits on may but i think that was uh, a shift from the bitcoin miner which got expelled in china and of course, there was a lot of uh, taken out there. But if we're taking a look at, is this the end all be all? Did we just miss the bull run? I don't think so. We can see that there was uh, quite a bit in March, but things are taping off. And this is of course the net flow. If we break this down by a daily and take a look at our outflow, you can see that miners have been selling. It's just a natural progression going all the way back to April, moving forward, here we go. And if we take a look at the inflows, meaning the, the Bitcoin coming back into the wallets of the miners themselves, not too much. So yeah, they're going to keep selling, just expect this to happen. And if we take a look at it, the hash rate is not at an all-time high. This is one of the things that give me a little bit of hope. 
because as the hash rate goes up, it becomes more difficult to actually mine Bitcoin. That means that uh, the Bitcoin miners have to actually compete and put in more hash power to be able to get those rewards. And we can see that uh, over time, we peaked out on May 26, and now we're going down a small amount of capitulation, but it's gonna take time for them to stop selling because we need more of those miners to shut down. And of course, take a look at the revenue, like we just talked about, it goes down. But there's something else we need to take a look at, which would be hash ribbons. And hash ribbons, the indicator itself, this indicator shows periods when Bitcoin mining rigs are being turned off due to the challenging market conditions. Hash rate is calculated on a daily basis, uh, and mass miner capitulation is typically ended when the 30-day moving average crosses back above the 60-day. I'm going to make this very simple. Every time it goes into the dark pink areas, watch out. You're going to see a lot of people, a lot of miners actually selling because they have to, and the, and the price usually goes down. If we zoom into this area, we can see that back here, it happened in July 13, 2023, as the 30-day, which is in blue, crosses under the 60-day, which is in pink. And then it was razor thin, and it crossed back over. And what happens is you have a price of around 31,000, 30,000. They start to sell, sell, sell. Now you exit the hash ribbon at 29,000. Okay, everybody shut off. Everybody's happy. Hash ribbons have, have gone down. But look what happens to the price. 29,400, and it goes down to 26, 27, 25, 25, 26, 27. And it takes a while for us to get back to the price appreciation of Bitcoin because why? There's a massive amount of selling by the miners because they have to make sure that everything is getting paid and the overhead and bills are done. So now let's fast forward to just a little bit ago. And that was in May 15th. We can see that the same thing happened. The 30-day moving average went underneath the 60-day. And we can see that it has happened. Price went down. Miners are selling. But then what do you notice right here at the very end? We are just about to cross over the 30 and the 60 day. What does that mean? I still believe we're going to have a longer time because miners are going to continue to sell just like they did back in 2023 because they have to recoup their losses and get prepared for the next big thing. So that leads me to my last point, which is this. Who else is selling? And again, we talked about this in the uh, live stream a couple of days ago. The OGs. This is from Willie Wu and he talks about this is called Coin Days Destroyed, or CDD. And he says it very plainly. He goes, look, the OGs, the people that have been investing in Bitcoin for quite some time, you know, the same people that tell you to hold on for dear life, hold it forever, never sell anything. Yeah, those guys sell like crazy. And I'm not saying that everybody does, but I'm just saying that when I talk about take profits and really to be ahead of the thing, I know some of you will say, I will never sell my Bitcoin. I will never sell my Ethereum. I'll never sell blah, 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 whatever it is. That's fine. I'm not here to give you financial advice. I'm just telling you what is happening. What is happening is the same people that tell you that nonsense will actually dump all over you. So we can see right here in the coin days destroyed. And what it, what it means is that, here's a little easy way to, to, to get a hold of it. Number of coins that have moved on chain at a particular time and multiples that value by a number of days since those coins were last moved. The metric gives an extra way to coins that have not moved for a period of time. So the example would be like this. A UTXO, an unspent transaction output for five Bitcoin that have not moved for 100 days equals 500 coin days. So five times 100 is 500. An unspent transaction output for 10 Bitcoin that has not moved for one day, that's 10 coin days, 10 times one. A UTXO for 0 0.1 Bitcoin not moved for 100 days is also 10. 0 0.1 times 100, 10 days. And we need to see that for these coin days destroyed, meaning they actually moved, a lot of these coins that haven't moved or Bitcoin haven't moved, they start to get moved when the price goes up. Have you noticed that? And it's it was pretty well apparent back in the early days when they could kind of time a little bit better, the OGs, and they sold accordingly. And once that happened, bam, everything just kind of fell off. When we got to 2017, we can see that they actually missed the very top, but they still did a pretty good job. Over here, did a reasonable job in January 2021, but then after that, it kind of tapered off quite precipitously. And you can see that even though the price was uh, going up pretty high in October 2021 and November 2021, there wasn't that much selling. And you can just see here, let me blow this up so you can see it. As time has gone on, especially into this all-time high, when we went from 26,000, 37,000, 40,000, 50,000, all the way up to 65,000 roughly. 
these guys were selling. So I'm not for sure exactly how much selling we have to go through, but you can tell right now there's been quite a dip and a decline, but I still think we've got a long way to go. So look, that's it for today. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. All these things that we talked about, I give this information to you so you can do with it what you will. Thanks so much for stopping by, I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.